Last lecture, you learned about chemical phosphorus removal. I asked you other methods of phosphorus removal you could think of. Well, of course I meant the topic of today. Removal using bacteria present in activated sludge or biological phosphorus removal. Around 1959, the process of biological pea removal was accidentally discovered in India. And at the end of the 1970s, it was introduced as a technology for phosphorus removal. The process is based on the presence of phosphate accumulating organisms, or in short, PAU. These organisms need alternating anaerobic and aerobic periods. They are capable of storing high quantities of polyphosphate in their cells. In short, polyphosphate is referred to as polyp. The PAU have the ability to accumulate phosphorus to approximately 10 to 15 percent of their cell dry mass. The metabolism of the PAU consists of an anaerobic storage stage and an aerobic oxidation stage. Under anaerobic conditions, the organisms can consume influent volatile fatty acids as poly beta hydroxy alkanoate or PHA. Energy required for the transport of VFA through the cell membrane for conversion into PHA and for cell maintenance is provided by the hydrolysis of the internally stored polypi. Consequently, orthophosphate is released into the bulk liquid, leading to an increase of its dissolved phosphate concentration. From the anaerobic stage, the sludge is transported to an aerobic or anoxic phase. Remember that in this phase, either oxygen, nitrite or nitrate is available as electron acceptor. In this phase, PAU utilized the stored PAA as carbon source and electron donor. PAU recharged their battery, so they restore their stored poly P stock. The intracellular stored PHA is used to generate energy, to restore the poly P pool, maintenance and biomass growth. Net removal of phosphate from the water is achieved through the removal of the net biomass growth, the waste activated sludge. This happens after the aerobic phase, so when the PAU are filled with poly P. If enough VFA is available during the anaerobic period, effluent orthophosphate concentrations as low as 0.2 mg P per liter can be reached. Switching anaerobic and aerobic me metabolism creates a competitive advantage for PAU. No other organism can use the internally stored COD anymore for cell growth under aerobic or anoxic circumstances. A simple configuration for the BioP system is thus an anaerobic step with a hydraulic retention time of half an hour to one hour in which phosphorus is released, followed by an aerobic step for phosphate uptake. This was the first implementation of BioP removal process, the faux redox system. However, if you realize what you learned about nitrogen removal and that about the biological phosphate removal, would this simple configuration work? The nitrate that will be formed during aeration at low loading or long sludge ages would be returned to the anaerobic tank with the return sludge. This would introduce an electron acceptor in the first tank, making it anoxic. The rapid growth of other heterotrophs using nitrate and the VFA required for denitrification and growth will result in a competitive loss of the PAU and the failure of the biological P removal. A solution is found in a modified UCT process. The return activated sludge is introduced in an anoxic tank where denitrification can take place. The mixed liquor after denitrification 
thus with low nitrate concentrations, is partly directed to the anaerobic tank, where it can be replenished with PAA. Typical sludge retention times for such systems are 7 to 15 days. Not too short since PAL are relatively slow growing, as well as the required nitrifiers, and not too long because P needs to be removed with the waste activated sludge. The faux strip process combines biological and chemical processes for phosphorus removal. With the schedule given in this slide and the knowledge obtained during the past lecture, you should be able to figure out how this works. Take your chance to discuss this at the discussion platform.